So I'm going to talk about noise within the context of information theory, but also considering noise as material for practice. And in my case, uh, sonic practice. But I think this paper is more related with the idea of noise within the framework of big data. So, so we know that noise is often conceived as interference, randomness, and fluctuation below the threshold of measurement. An unwanted signal, a state of disorder, or a disturbance that does not contain meaningful data or information. And because of this, it is a term that carries so many negative connotations. Despite such connotations, noise has been responsible for increasing our understanding of some of the greatest problems of our time, including, for instance, the nature of atomic particles, thanks to Brownian motion. But I think these negative characterizations thus fail to recognize the multi-scale complexity of noise or its intrinsically functional relationship with biological, sociopolitical and economic systems, as well with the case of music or inferential reason. Um, we have the examples of self-organizing systems in their processes of evolution and how these take advantage of noise in a number of examples of noise-induced order, both, both in biological organization as well as in the physics and chemistry of pattern formation. Thus, noise is in some way co-constitutive for the very formation and transformation of such systems. And such examples can offer different ways to show how noise provides various positive schema. For example, the emergence of order, the discovery of new observables, or transformation to new and more complex states. Such empirical investigations, I think, cannot be taken in isolation and are necessarily wed to noise not only as an empirical phenomenon, but also as an idea. And this is where philosophy and science must come into contact with one another. And a history of concepts can be set alongside recent experimental approaches to noise. I consider, um, this is my main point, noise as a positive contributing factor in the foundation of epistemic organization. Noise comes to be seen as a source of variation at the level of development of living organisms and populations. And I think that's the same also for complex systems in the context of information theory. It's worth noting that as the networks that cognition is embedded into grow larger in their information processing and retaining capacity, the noise in these networks will also grow. Subsequently, placing increased importance on the function of noise. If cognitive processes are extended into digital informational networks, then the problem of noise, as it pertains to the dynamics of these systems, is relevant to the question of the technological development of the mind itself. And this leads to the question of what role and function noise will play in structuring the cognitive processes that are embedded in these informational networks. My commitment here is with addressing the scientific explication of the natural phenomenon of noise. 
And we now know that the probabilistic distribution of the transformation of appearances from one thing to another, in which we have seen that noise takes an active role, ask for distinguishing noisy from chaotic behavior. From our ineludible limited epistemic perspective, it's very difficult to know if the data of unobserved process exhibits a random or chaotic behavior, since in practice no time series consists of a pure signal. There will always be some form of corrupting noise, even if it's present as runoff or truncation error. Thus, any real time series, even if mostly deterministic, will contain some pseudo randomness. When we classify the dynamical systems as chaotic, we are talking about deterministic systems and um, whose behavior can in principle be predicted but after a while these systems appear to be random and I would like to emphasize that the dynamics of noise or in the noise induced noise oriented dynamics of a system the potentiality that we can obtain consists in the possibility of the emergence again of new order or new information and this entails a dialectical process of exchange that moves noise away from an unilateral characterization based on determinism or indeterminism. Noise is not only necessarily the enemy of information, I think, but also is a probability function in the emergence of newness. Noise can disorganize a system, but it also brings in something new to that system that allows or even assists a constant reorganization of the same. So, if we acknowledge the fundamental changes in the cognitive map of the existing system, we should assert the fact that a form of contemporaneity uh, determine for example, in the case of big data, demand to recognize that our models of traditional data processing in relation to our cognitive capacities are inadequate. Because big data represents this <coughs> high volume, velocity and variety and requires a specific technology and analytical methods for its transformation into value and human mind uh, could never process uh, the big data. So complete and generalized automatization have accompanied the advent of the digital age. And all technology has, as we all know, equally curative and toxic potentials. There is both a generative web and a mimetic one, which destroys the now how of those who use it. The character and the structure of our cognitive processes are subject to the political and economic forces, which complex systems like modern economy, we are facing crises which are related to the automation which arouse with algorithmically control high frequency trading. So I'm gonna talk about high frequency trading for a second for using one example. We know that approximately automated high frequency trading cover the 77% of the volume of transactions on the UK and around the 73 of the US market and without any kind of additional human input, high frequency trading simultaneously processes large volumes of information to rapidly trade securities, something that ordinary human traders cannot do. 
and the silent beams of high frequency order shifting trillions across the Earth's oceans at light speeds, all automated, are far beyond the scope of humans to remotely grasp the nature of these transactions. And we know that knowledge is produced by the transmission of new forms of media, of memory, but since our memories have become stored in hard drive or storage clouds and our experience are immediately captured and shared all over the planet, inevitably we must ask ourselves how these non-biological phenomenologies are shaped in our extended cognition processes to the extent of determining the process of ontogenesis or technogenesis. We know that fed by a large number of data on past experience, algorithms can predict future development if the future is similar to the past. If the system dynamics of the future change, the past can say little about the future. For this, it would be necessary to have a thorough understanding of the system's dynamics, which implies theory. And the theme that it's responsible for a big part of the dynamism of information systems is noise. An example of this relationship between noise with the aforementioned problems will be the case of the flash crash. The flash crash was um, a United States trillion dollar stock market crash that took place in 2010. And it was described it as one of the most turbulent periods in the history of financial markets. So high frequency traders have a higher information to noise contribution ratio than no high frequency traders. And there are instances where this is accompanied by a large absolute noise contribution. So the 2010 flash crash possibly had its origin in the noisy behavior of high frequency traders. Because high frequency trade algorithms react immediately to small fluctuations of price and it's a quality of markets that financial economists call microstructural noise. This microstructural noise describes price deviation from its fundamental value induced by certain features of the market under consideration. Noise makes high-frequency estimates of some parameters, for example, realized volatility, very unstable. And financial speculation, derivatives, trading, and high-frequency trade is replete both with intentional and unintentional noise. And of course, deeply predicated on the probabilistic calculation of randomness. So I would like to clarify that complexity is not intrinsically better than simplicity. Indeed, most, in most cases, simplicity is favorable and many natural processes are perhaps better explained under the notion of, let's say, simplexity. But complex adaptive systems such as the financial market should not be valorized on account of their complexity because to naturalize such a system is not the same as to endorse its present form. To understand noise, then, we need to do more than postulate its ontological existence. It must rather be explained in terms of the capacity to describe the dynamics underlying the appearance of randomness at multiple scales and across multiple contexts. This is why I think uh, and other scholars like Inigo Woyukins, uh, a multi-scale of noise is necessary. The problem, and <clears throat> more or less here, 
I have a question that I would like to discuss with you is that when we acknowledge the fact that as philosophers or mathematicians like Barbara Bravi or Giuseppe Longo argue that randomness in physical and computational theories means unpredictability with regard to the intended theory. However, in these complex systems such as high frequency trading, it is key to their structural stability and thus cannot be understood as noise because it's the same in the context of any kind of evolution. It is misleading to characterize randomness in complex systems as noise since this variability is rather a functional property uh, that is far from constituting an interference, for example. Uh, I think information systems are complex hierarchically nested systems in which multi-level randomness is so intrinsic to their stability that noise is not a pertinent concept in explaining their dynamics. And also randomness and noise cannot be treated as they are the same thing everywhere. So my question is, should, should we continue to consider noise as such when it takes on a functional role? And if not, how we should address this transformation of randomness from a disturbing to a constitutive role. So I have a final remark for exemplifying this that is the causation correlation problem in statistical probability and how this is related to the concept of noise. Because in a studying a data set many correlations will be apparent that these apparent correlations exist is an indisputable fact that requires no inference. In contracts, imputing a causal relationship between two correlated facts is always an inferential judgment. So variables that are correlated appear as a signal of their causal connection. And when a causal connection is inferred, but the correlation is merely contingent, then the inference is, let's say, a false positive. What was taken for a signal was in fact noise. Conversely, the correlated variables may be taken to be only contingently related and ignored as noise. In such a case, if in fact there is a causal connection, then what was understood as noise was actually signal, a false negative. In some cases, I think inferring a causal relation will be reasonable because there are or there may be explanations for the link. However, if there is no discernible reason for the two variables to be correlated, then imputing a causal relationship is based purely on statistical probability, since for most data sets, relations of contingent correlation far outweigh causal connections, inferring the latter may be a high risk strategy. The larger the data set, the more clear and accurate some correlations will appear. However, as a result, there is a higher risk of false inference. And this is because there is no way to discriminate between purely contingent correlations and an actual causal connection unless we have a causal hypothesis that can be tested. And this is the problem with the recent claims made for the power of big data analysis. As Kalude and Longo argue, the relinquishment of causal hypothesizing in the favor of the big data doctrine of letting the numbers speak for themselves unleashes, uh, in their words, a deluge of spurious correlations. And I think this 
in my opinion, is the contemporary, the leader, you know, the information processing without, uh, without reason. Okay, thank you.